Hi guys, I'm Josh. And I'm Rob. Welcome back to Firebite. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit differently. We're going to be checking out these two gimbal systems. We're going to have a battle to the death. We have the DJI RSC and the Xeon Weeble 2. Let's get ready to gimbal! In the blue corner, weighing in at 1.4 kilograms, we have the Xeon Weeble 2. And in the red corner, weighing in at 1.2 kilograms, we have the DJI RSC 2. There'll be 10 rounds in total. Each round will be comparing one part of the gimbals. The winner of each round is awarded one point. The gimbal with the most points at the end gets the knockout and is declared the champion. On to round one. Ready? Fight! So, in the payload category, what do we have? Well, in a nutshell, the Xeon can take a kilogram more at four kilograms compared to the DJI's three kilograms. Zion doesn't directly advertise this, but from what research we've found, it is around about four kilograms, which is quite a considerable amount for such a small package. Um, we've also thrown the heavier of the two cameras on this rig today, just to see how smooth it is, you know, especially with the big battery here. You know, with that said, the DJI's algorithm of how the camera moves, how the gimbal moves, does feel a little bit smoother, but the motors on this one do feel so much more up to the task. And with that said, this round is gonna have to go to the Weeble. Now, when it comes to battery life, both gimbals seem to be pretty good. The DJI says it's rated for about 14 hours and the Zion on the website says about nine. Uh, what we can tell is that's about right, but there is a little bit of a quirk with the Zion we noticed. It seems to just drain when it's in the bag completely off. So after a few days of being sat in the bag, we'd have to make sure it's charged again as the battery life would have dropped off a little bit. Where we've not had any issues with the DJI, we can leave it for weeks and it's hardly drained at all. So I'm not sure what's going on there, but purely on that fact, and the DJI has a longer life, I think it goes to the DJI. So in this category with onboard controls, well, design you can see here is very well kitted out. It has itself a really nice monitor with even without the video transmission system, it's still really, really nice to be able to control and see and just touch to get all of your settings really nicely and easily. Even with that, it has this nice switchable system on here so you can easily get into the modes that you like. The button at the front, which with the video transmission system hooked up, one touch will track a face and only a face. We couldn't really get it to track an object specifically. And also with your follow focus wheel here. Now, with that said, it's nice having it here with the, with the two-handed system. It is handy, but what I like about the Ronin's version, however, is it's a much nicer feeling dial and it's on the front and it's one-handed. Comparing the screens that they have, this one is much nicer than the DJI's tiny little OLED screen. This gives me a nice easy battery percentage well in the top right-hand corner, which I really, really like. Um, so I think this round is gonna have to go to the Xeon. Now, when it comes to price, it's obviously on everyone's mind when they're thinking about buying a gimbal. The Zion, without any optional extras, comes in around about £509. Or if you want the fully rigged kit with the Master Eye transmission system, it's about £599. Where the DJI, on the other hand, comes in at under £400 for the base model, or around £600 with everything rigged out. So, numbers are numbers, DJI wins. So in this round, we have ergonomics. Well, the Xeon kind of comes out on top of this one. The joystick is right in your hand. You can easily control the gimbal nicely with one hand. Whereas the DJI does have the focus, but in terms of movement, being able to operate it one-handed like this is really, really nice. Also having this in a semi-briefcase slung mode, you can easily, even in the base model, you can easily unscrew this, and pop it on the back here, which is really, really nice compared to the DJI's optional extra we have to get the handle to turn it into this briefcase mode or you know just put it in sleep mode and then unscrew it and then flatten it down so i think in terms of how 
the weight distribution feels on both of these gimbals, the Xeon wins really as you can easily put it on your hip nicely, you know, in briefcase mode, it's nicer on your back. So yeah, I think this one's gonna take it. Portability. So, how good are these about lugging around in all your bags and stuff? Now the DJI has the extra benefit of being able to be folded completely in half, which brings down the footprint substantially. Both of the bags they come with are around about the same size, so if you're gonna use the basic bags, there's not much difference. But being able to fold this in half means it can fit in a lot of other bags a lot easier. Portability goes to DJI. Now, if you're thinking about how much these are gonna break your back, the weight of both of these gimbals isn't actually far off. The Zion comes in at 1.4 kilograms of outer camera on. It can hold some heavier rigs though, but if you want the lightest possible setup, the DJI comes in at 1.2 kilograms, making it a much lighter feeling system to run around with. So, point to DJI. So the versatility of these gimbals, I mean, rigging options, what can you do with them? Well, with this one here, base package, you can pop this out, pop the handle on here, like we said earlier, but you can rig from this point, you can rig from this point. Nothing extra is really required to get this into extra slinging modes. Having the monitor here means you don't have to ha add an extra monitor, but if you do get the pro handle, you do have all these extra rigging options as well on here, cold shoes, other three quarter inch uh, screw holes, Rosetta bits and pieces here. So there is plenty of options for rigging with this gimbal. With the DJI, it only has two NATO points on each side of it. So it has a little bit less rigging options and you do have to kit it out a little bit more to get it to the same kind of spec as what the base Zion has on its own. And outside of that as well, when you do have something like the video transmitter like we have here for both gimbals, the Raveneye and the Xeon's um, own video transmitter. You know, with the Raveneye, it has to be used with a phone. However, this has a cool little caveat with it where you can use it with not just a phone, but also something called a Master Eye system, which itself has its own little follow focus wheel and full gimbal controls on it. So with that said, this round is gonna go to the Xeon. Wireless transmission systems. Yes, both of these gimbals have wireless transmission options. The DJI with their Raveneye and the Zion with the Master Eye. Now, this one's quite a close one because the DJI system comes with so many more features and options like being able to load LUTs onto the app on your phone. Uh, the Active Track is amazing to use, it's really good. But on the Zion, you can have a extra Master Eye controller which is a big, great touchscreen uh, with a joystick and focus control. We had some issues with the Master I.O. Uh, it runs off NPF batteries and after running for a little while, it did seem to get pretty hot. And in doing so, the touchscreen became a bit unresponsive. Also, it's really nice to have a dedicated system for your control, but it seems to be lacking some pretty essential options. Even the app design allows you to add LUTs to it, but the the dedicated controller has no ability to do so. And features like tracking, you can track with design systems, but it seems to only really work on faces. If you can do objects, we didn't really have much luck in doing so. So just due to the amazing app support and amazing design that comes in software with DJI, I think DJI comes out with a bit of a win. Now, both of these gimbals can be used with the app and the uh, transmission systems both work with that as well. DJI have always been really known for great software development. Their software just has uh, amazing polish and loads of cool features and settings to do. The active track is obviously an amazing feature to add into that. And Zion, it's not ever been one of their strongest points, to be honest. Zion's app is a bit clunky to use, a bit hard to find in your settings, but it's fine enough. It gets most of the job done. And talking about that, the uh, Ronin systems always seem to have great compatibility with slightly older cameras. 
I was able to plug this quite old A6300 Sony into this and it would be able to control zoom and record all fine. But with the Zion, if I put this camera on there, I would have almost no control over the camera. And if I was able to get something, it would be able to zoom, but it would zoom so slow it would be useless to me. So, app support, software, DJI. K-O! And the winner is DJI RSC2! Now, it's time to come to a close. We're losing some of the light, and we're gonna to have to announce a winner. And with that said, the DJI RSC2 has just come out on top. It means it's been a close fight all the way through, but this thing is absolutely fantastic. You know, DJI have been making some absolutely amazing gimbals, and my hope really is, is brands like Zoom can keep them on their toes at all times. And having that constant battle of which one is better, which one is worse, is only gonna make it better for ourselves. And with that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Please like, share, and subscribe and I'll catch you next time. Take care, bye-bye.